Hey guys, this is Professor Ganymede, and finally we have our first goddamn Overwatch balance patch. Man, Blizzard has taken forever to release this. Like, they've been dragging their feet, but we finally get it better late than never. So, I'm going to go ahead and read through it, and then I will give you my thoughts on this patch. So, let's get started. So, here we go. Hero balance changes. We got McCree. Um, so we have um, a change towards alternative fire, the recovery time, i.e. the amount of time before McCree starts reloading, decreased from 0.75 seconds to 0.3 seconds, and the bullet damage decreased from 70 to 45. And then we got developer comments. McCree was performing too well against all targets, making him feel like a must-pick in many situations. By reducing the damage of his alternative fire, McCree is now significantly weaker against tanks like Roadhog and Reinhardt, but still maintains his lethality against smaller targets like Tracer and Gendry. Very interesting, guys. All right. Then we go to <laughs> Widowmaker. <laughs> stripper. I call her Stripperella because she dresses like a whore. So, Stripperella. We got where did <laughs> Alternative fire, scope, scope shot. Base damage decreased from 15 to 12. That makes it so at full charge, um, when she's scoping, her body shot damage does 120 damage. We'll get back to that. Note, scope shot damage multiplier remains unchanged. Headshot damage multiplier increased from 2 times to 2.5. Players must now wait for the unscoping animation to completely finish before scoping. Very interesting. Infrasight. Ultimate cost increased by 10%. Alright, developer comments. In the right hands, Widowmaker can often feel unstoppable even when just landing body shots instead of critical headshots. The changes to her alternative fire weaken, weakens body shot damage while leaving her headshot damage unchanged. Additionally, we felt her ultimate ability, Infrasight, was coming up a little too frequently, especially considering its impact on the game. Then we got random bug fixes and stuff, but that's not what we care about. We care about the balance changes because that's what has the most effect on the game um, as of right now. Until they start messing with tick rate in the general game, we're going to worry about balance changes. McCree balance changes, so this basically makes it so after his flash, his um, right click, he reloads faster normally, even though he can roll with a reload. But the damage, he does less damage, which means he's going to do less burst damage to like tanks and stuff, which means is he requires more skill to play. Um, he can't just burst down. I would have liked it if they went a different route in not only doing this, but maybe making it so this is not 45, maybe like 50 or something, or like 60. But make it so his... Um, AOE flashbang only stuns if it actually hits the person like it actually has to touch them not just throw it at their feet and and hit and just throw it in the round direction with no skill and just stun a bunch of people no you actually have to aim that thing and hit somebody right and then maybe make it so if it if it um if it hit the ground and they got hit by the AOE it slows them or roots them or something like that but just making it so you can just throw it in a general direction and stun a person without aiming, that's bullshit. That's that's no skill. So this is the right direction in that regard. Um, they're probably not going to do many more further changes. So it's a, it's, a, it's a baby step in the right direction, though I would have um, liked it if they went a different direction. Though it's it's not bad. I, I'm not going to complain too much about that. It's, it's, a, it's a step in the right direction. McCree was, had no counters, now he will have more counters because he can't just burst down everybody, including tanks. Um, you know, he, he actually have to aim now. So now we go to goddamn Widowmaker, Stripperella the Whore. Um, I hate this character. <laughs> I hate everything about Widowmaker. Um, regarding the patches, this is the, the right direction. A baby step in the right direction. Um, now, I actually think this was actually a really good um, uh, nerf to Widow in that they reduced her body, her body damage to 120 because that directly affects characters like Tracer and Zenyatta. There will be a lot more Zenyattas now. This was inadvertently a small buff to Zenyatta because now what, the presence of Widowmaker doesn't just like shut down Zenyatta anymore. I mean, he's still just as easy to headshot. So. 
Um, you know, good player that's still just going to smash him. His immobility still makes him very easy to headshot. It makes it so he can't very easily take alternative paths. He still has to go down very dangerous paths. He has to go down the main road, the main entrance. He can't go around and go through a window or something, or, you know, or go through a back alley because it takes too long. It take, and he has to be near his team because he has to, you know, um, Keep his orbs on people and keep his, and he, he keeps his aura on the enemy. He's just so slow, so he's still gonna be easy to headshot. But the fact that he can't be body shot anymore, you will see um, Zenyatta being picked more. Um, I'm even going to um, pick Zenyatta more. So a little, a little bit about how I play is I play pretty much. I played a ton of, of all the characters, Lucio, Mercy, and Zenyatta. Um, and if I haven't played the, those, the support characters, and then I've even played a bunch of the utility characters, Symmetra, May, Zarya, right? So I stopped playing everyone but Lucio because Lucio is self-reliant. I play solo queue because that's what I enjoy. I don't Even when I was playing with a six-man group, my team was often very unreliable. I was mercy. No one protected me. If they died, I died a lot of the time. They, I couldn't get my team to coordinate it because just having a bunch of good players on one, on one team um, you know, as a group of six people, it doesn't make them a unit. It still takes work and dedication and time. I can't just jump into a game as Mercy, you know, and, and perform as well as I could on Lucio. You know, I you need a coordinated team for Mercy and Zenyatta. So I just had a really bad experience because I'm like, I play solo queue because that's what I enjoy. I don't want to have to, you know, t spend a bunch of time trying to get deal with these specific people because, you know, you have to synergize with specific people. Um, just because you have a bunch of good players on one team doesn't mean they're going to be a unit. So I just stopped playing Zenyatta and Widow and um, Mercy. So, But now with these changes, I'm going to play more Zenyatta. Um, this is not all that needs to happen. Zenyatta still needs a buff to his health so he can be a contender with Lucio on other maps like like um, attack maps. Lucio is still way better. He's still more mobile. He's still more survivable. He can jump on the point. He can contest the payload. He can push the payload. He can do things that Zenyatta just simply can't do with his immobility and with his lack of health and with his lack of defense abilities. I mean, Lucio can heal himself during combat. That's huge. He can he can bounce around and, and get to very awkward places and make himself really hard to hit while on the payload or while contesting a point. That's huge. Man, um, Lucio is just way better than Zenyatta in so many situations. So now I'm going to be playing Zenyatta mostly in defense because then Zenyatta will have, you know, someone like Symmetra and Torbjorn to give him more HP to make it so he can actually do his job more often. Um, but, and, and maybe certain cap, capture the hill maps, but Lucio is still way better. He needs an, uh, uh, a crease to his health and he needs his right click fix because that is too unreliable an ability. That right click is shit. And I have a whole video on why the right click is bad. They need to fix that thing and they need to buff his health so Zenyatta can actually be a contender for the support spot. And it's not just, oh, you want, you want the best? Lucio. Unless you specifically mold a team around this character, Lucio is the best. So, um, what else we got? Uh, headshot damage. Yeah. So Zenyatta is still going to be easy to headshot because he's still immobile. But. This thing is actually really nice. Players must now wait for the unscoping animation to completely finish before scoping again, which is going to make it harder for widows to be mobile and to be like quick scoping, right? So um, it's going to make them harder to reacquire targets. So this more than the, the damage reduction is um, a nerf to high skill play. It's going to make it so you, the, the widow can't just be everywhere, you know, you know, you know, quick scoping people. They actually nerfed her ability to quick scope and it will reacquire tires really, really quickly. You can't just constantly zoom that back and forth and try to reacquire tires really fast. Yeah, um, they, they uh, toned that down, which is really nice. That's a, it's another reason we're going to see more than Yadas. And then the ultimate thing is whatever. <laughs> it's, it's good, I guess. All right. So, but overall... This patch is a step in the right direction, but I, I still, I'm still taking points away from Blizzard because they've taken too goddamn long to change problems, to fix problems that have been around for months. They knew in the closed beta months ago that Zenyatta was fucking broken. He has been, his pick rate, he's the least picked champion, uh, hero in the game. Um, they nerfed them into the ground, and they had a prime opportunity in the beta to just throw a bunch of 
balance changes at us and then try it out in the, in the in the um in the atmosphere of a bunch of players playing in the open beta but they didn't even do that they wasted an opportunity and then waited what two weeks after the game came out to patch this, they have lost a ton of players because of the, imp the improper balancing of their game. And I'm glad they lost those players because they did not. They've been dragging their feet. They have not been listening to our very loud voices. They haven't even done a change to Zenyatta yet. It's been two weeks since the game came out. The game has been out for months um, in closed beta. We've been able to see the characters for months and they haven't done anything. So baby steps. Baby steps for a game that needs long strides. When they come out with the, the with the diva buff, they need to also buff Zenyatta. And I have not heard anyone talk about this, but they need to buff Mercy as well. I mean, not buff maybe, but just change her so she's more self reliant. There is no so, so, so the change she needs is she needs to be unrestricted. Her guardian angel needs to be unrestricted. She needs to be able to fly anywhere she wants at any time. She needs to be unrestricted from having to fly to her teammates because that makes it so your positioning is dictated by your team's positioning, which is unnecessary. There is no reason you can't have it so Mercy is self-reliant and balanced. They can do it. They're smart enough. They're smart enough to do it. They just choose not to because they're dumb. They're the dumbest smart people <laughs> I've ever met. It's like... Buffing the um, Mercy's Guardian Angel so it's unrestricted would not in any way hurt the game. It would it would not in any way hurt anyone's experience of the game. It would just make her a viable pick versus um, um, a Lucio and a buffed Zenyatta. Right now, I'm not playing Mercy. I will not be playing Mercy unless a team that I that invites me really wants me to play Mercy. Otherwise, no, she's shit. And non-competitive play. I play a lot of solo queue. A lot of people play a lot of solo queue. She is shit. Lucio is better every time. She is too unreliable. Maybe your team dies or halfway across the map every 30 seconds over here by themselves. If their team is doing that, which is a lot of time is the case in solo queue or in dual queue or non-competitive play, then you just have an unreliable character on the team. Lucio is way better. They need to the unrestrict her. It would not harm the game in any way. It would only help. If you want to balance it, maybe increase maybe increase the time it takes to charge her ultimate as a balance change. Something like that, but balance her so she is self-reliant. They're probably not going to do it, which is a huge mistake, because there's not enough voices telling them to do it. People, this needs to happen in order to make the game more fun. Zenyatta needs more health. He needs a buff to his right click. You do that, it will make his kit make more sense. It will make his short range ultimate that only lasts six seconds that he has no mobility to get into. So the thing about his ultimate is he's so slow, he can't reliably get into position to use it. And then even when he uses it, he's so squishy that a good team was going to hunt him down if he tries, if he's still in combat. So he has to spend a one second or two second running away. And even an even better team would be like, what? That Zenyatta is slow as dirt. I'm Tracer. I'm Genji. I'm Winston. I'm jumping on his face as soon as he stops ulting and Zenyatta's dead. That his ult puts him in such too vulnerable position. But if you buff his health, if you make his rely click right, right click more reliable as a source of burst damage, you make it so he's able to use his ult and not have it be a suicidal endeavor. Buffing these characters, Mercy and Zenyatta will not hurt your game. It could only help this was a step in the right direction, but they need long strides. Um, so I, I'd give this a 5 out of 10 as a patch. They, they're too slow. They're too slow, but better late than never.